This is Julia Whittup with Talk Story Today, and I have with me Anya Sagan, and she's a shamanic artist and practitioner. And tell us how you came to be a shamanic artist and practitioner, Anya. Well, it was a bit of a long journey, pardon the pun, pardon the pun but um, it, was, it started when I was in a cult for many years, and I didn't leave it out of some courageous act. I had a total mental breakdown. Down. And uh, for about six years, I was severely ill. I had schizophrenia, severe um, depression, acute anxiety disorder, and trichotillomania, the hair pulling disease, all at the same time. And the nothing was working. I was trying desperately to get better. I ended up becoming pregnant during that time. Long story short, they tried everything they could. Western medicine, I tried yoga, tried, yoga, tried herbs, I tried everything. Nothing was working. And the morning I was institutionalized and the morning I was supposed to go for my very first electroshock therapy treatment, the voices in my head suddenly stopped. And this one female voice said, no, this is not for you. Find a shamanic healer. And I was like, what? Because these voices had been in my head for that for six years until that point. Oh my so God. Stopped. I, my, my roommate at the time was helping me look after my son uh, help, help me find a local practitioner. And within one year, he managed to help me reverse those years of severe mental illness. And I was able to study with him for 2012 to 2013 and become a shamanic healer myself. Because wow. I found with the very first session that I had with him, I started to feel better, like a trickle of life had started coming back into my system. And I vowed that if I ever got better, that I would do the same thing for other people. So that's Good how I became for you. Actually, I've heard, I think that's pretty common that sham, shamanic people are called, that's their call when they have that breakdown. Their, the initiation, so. yeah. Yes. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And all that time you were struggling against it, you knew it wasn't you. It was, there were voices in my head that were like bullies. Uh, the cult that I was in had some very interesting ideas about the, the way the, the universe works and things. And I was told that I was a psychic vampire. And these voices in my head were constantly telling me that I was a vampire. And it, they were very negative. And, and then suddenly that one morning, I was about to go for the ECT, or electroshock therapy. They, they suddenly stopped and this female voice started to talk to me. Just like, it was just like she was in the, a person in the room right next to me. There was nobody else yeah, it was, there. It was like 6.30 in the morning. Wow. And it was real dramatic because the others had all stopped. Yeah, it, it just, it, like, I didn't understand what was going on because they had been with me for so many years, constantly tormenting me, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and can't turn it off. And then suddenly this one benevolent voice. She had spoken to me once during my illness. And um, I know, I, I hope I'm not taking too much time, but no. there was a pair of red gloves in my apartment. I was by myself. And this female voice said, put those on. And I was like, okay. The other voices were still in kind of the background. I put them on and I said, well, why did you have me do this? And she said, self-glove, because I was pulling my hair, right, with these gloves and I couldn't do it. Oh, wow. Self, self glove. <laughs> oh. So if someone who is having those kinds of problems came to you, you could help them? I would definitely ask my guides if I was called to do the work with them. If I could um, do them, I would definitely work with people if I could. Yeah. If that's, okay. you know, if, if my guides tell me, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to enter into something just for the pure bravado of, yes, I want to help you. I want to make sure that I was able to, and yeah. that it is the right time for that person to receive the healing, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But definitely I would. Since then, my guides have shown me several techniques with people who are actually in severe mental illness um, to help them to uh, come out of that. Great. Well, tell me about some of the services you, you do offer to people. Sure. Uh, I do basic um, soul retrieval, um, the, uh, the, the returning of the lost pieces of the self. Um, I do soul remembering. I don't know. They may be just terminology. I don't know if it's the same across the board, but the um, journeying back to when a person was, or was just before they incarnated into this lifetime to receive messages um, about this particular point in their journey. Uh, I do extraction work, you know, working with spiritual, spiritual intrusions and locked energy. I also work with um, past life stuff, uh, soul contracts, which is like 
vows and things we've made in other lifetimes. Uh, I do what something that my guides showed me how to do called junk DNA work. And it's clearing the energy of the junk DNA that we carry, the ancestral fears and things like that in our lineages, as, as well as oh, just as wow. human beings. Okay, that would be important. I'm just in the process right now of um, putting together a year-long course called the Four Seasons of Freedom. And uh, it's got to do with um, tuning to nature and the cycles of life, and the cycles of nature and the wisdom that's shared from the earth with each, through each of the seasons. That's just, that's in the process of being developed. I'm hoping to launch it on the uh, winter solstice. Wonderful. That's why I'm doing this. I just became so concerned about planet earth. I mm. thought we are all going to die if we don't turn our attitude around mm -hmm. and start taking care of our mama. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this whole idea of, of um, the industrial complex being the most important thing and jobs being more important than the, like, when we've built all these buildings, who's going to sustain our oxygen and our, you know, the water we drink and the food we, we, we need to eat? Like, where is it going to be if, if it's all built over with pavement and buildings when you think about it? Yeah, and the water, they're, it's mm -hmm. getting com uh, dirty and messed up so fast so mm -hmm. i'm really concerned about all of that me too okay anything else so oh why don't you give us your website address so oh. that people can go there if they want to get a hold of you sure it's it's a fairly long word it's uh www.https um dot whatever colon forward slash forward slash yeah um www dot miracle walker uh enterprises dot com i can spell it out but it's fairly long it's miracle the word miracle and the word walker that's my spirit name i can explain that some other time okay. uh, enterprises.com uh -huh. okay and they can get a hold of you through that link yep i'm also on facebook as anya sagan a-n-j-a -A, last name sagan s-a-g-a-n and uh yeah i i also have anya miracle walker as an author as well okay and you're also on our website at um, I just went blank. <laughs> when you get into that creative space, it's kind of, yeah, logic kind of goes. <laughs> Demonicarts.center. Center is the new, one of those new things. Um, it, are you going to list in our directory? I would love to. I do distance healings. Like, I, like over, over like, all of my clients pretty much are, are distance healing. I've done people work with people in Europe, in Australia, all over the place. And uh, everything I do, I can. I send uh, what I do when I have my sessions. I send a recording of what I what has found, so that they can refer to it later as well. Oh, could you? I'm going to go over a little bit, but I would like to hear a little bit about your art and what you do mm. there. I started this, um, it's, it, this it, this is still in its infancy. I've done a lot of artwork, um, like shamanic work, as far as like a journey and then an image will come. Um, I, I haven't got an example of it right in front of me. I have one painting, um, but it's, um, it's something that comes to me in journey work. I also use, uh, I can do like private pieces for people where I journey and like there's the spirit helpers or whatever will come on it. I've done on it on jackets before I've done on canvases and things like that specific for people um, for their own healing kind of thing. Uh, I can show you if you want me to, I can just, I have to go off yes. camera for a second. Just to okay. Grab it. That'd be this, great. That'd be great. This one was uh, actually, I, it ended up becoming a logo for my business, but it was, it came in a shamanic meditation. One moment, please. Okay. Oh, I saw that on your website. Pardon me? I saw that on your website. That's beautiful. Thank you. It was funny because this um, spring, a friend of mine had found a whole bunch of um, young larvae of, of monarch butterflies. And because they had become, you know, really endangered because they had a mass die off. I took care of six of them and I got watched to actually watched them birth from their chrysalises. Oh, yes. It was, what an oh my God. And they have, when you look at them, they have little flecks of gold and those they're tiny little chrysalises and then uh. the, the creature is liquefied in it. And then you can start to see the, the, the colors of the wings. And then right when it's about to come out, it becomes transparent. So you see the whole butterfly squashed inside there. And oh within five God. minutes, the wings fill with fluid and they become a little bit floppy. And then within about an hour, they're rich and they can fly. 
it's absolutely, <gasps> and they're, they're opening and closing their wings. I have, I have it on videotape. Uh, oh or on, my on video. God, that sounds <sighs> fabulous. It was such an amazing like gift because, and then I know, you know, a huge symbol of transformation. And I believe that that's happening for all of us like, collectively as a species. We have to. Yes, like our we have to, to we're going to survive as a yeah. species. Well, it was yeah. very good having you on the show today. And I want to encourage you. so much for having me. Sorry. Yes, and you're coming next summer, I hope. Oh, you, you twist my rubber arm. <laughs> I've always <laughs> wanted to see Colorado. And yes, Great. I definitely will. Great. Okay, thank you. Thank you.